Hi, everyone. In this video, I will be demonstrating how you can generate sample proportions and confidence intervals for those proportions using SPSS version 29. And uh, before I get started, I will mention that underneath the video description, you'll find a link to the SPSS data file uh, that I'll be working from throughout this video presentation. So you can download a copy of the data to follow along. So the data that we're going to be uh, starting out with is this right here. We're going to uh, essentially assume that we have a sample of 25 students from a high school, and um, they have basically given an indication as to whether they plan to attend college or uh, plan not to attend college uh, after graduation. So the value of zero on this variable represents a plan not to attend college. A value of one indicates the plan to attend college. Now, you can think of each uh, case uh, on this particular variable as essentially representing a Bernoulli uh, trial. A Bernoulli trial is basically a random experiment uh, where you have two possible outcomes, uh, either success or failure. So in this particular uh, demonstration, a success is being reflected in a value of one, which indicates that a student has indicated that they plan to attend college. A failure is uh, a value of zero, which indicates that a student is planning not to attend college. But the notion of success and failure is not representing a uh, good or bad or uh, a preferable state of affairs versus a non-preferable state of affairs. Uh, what we're actually referencing is the target outcome and the non-target outcome. So if we're interested in the proportion of students indicating a, um, a, uh, a plan to, uh, to graduate uh, a plan to attend college after graduation, uh, then the success is represented by the plan to graduate outcome. Uh, however, if the success was uh, deemed to be uh, uh, the outcome where a, where a student indicates that they do not plan to attend college, then that could also be a success, whereas plan to attend college would be deemed a failure. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, as we refer to successes and failures uh, in our analysis. So like I said, our, our uh, analysis right now, we're going to be um, generating the proportion and uh, confidence interval around that proportion for the um, for those students who are uh, indicating and a plan to attend college. So we'll go to analyze, we'll go down to compare means and proportions, and then go to one sample proportions right here. And I'm gonna reset this. We'll move plan college over to the test variables box. And down below, you'll see there's a um, little uh, set of options for under defined success. So, you have these two options right here, first value and last va value. So basically, uh, it's like this. If you order the values on the variable, like in this case, we have values of zero and one. Uh, if you select last value, then uh, which is what we have by default, then we, we are selecting the success as being uh, a case that has or cases that have a one, basically students who are planning to attend college, um, whereas the failure would be the value of zero. If we didn't have this click, but instead we click the first value, then in that particular case, the success would be uh, those students indicating zero, which is that they are planning not to attend college, and the failure would be uh, would be uh, planning to attend college. The other uh, thing I'll uh, draw your attention to is you have this uh, other option down here that says value. So if you highlight that right there, in fact, well, let's go ahead and do that. I'll highlight that. By default, it's uh, fixed to one, but you can basically select any group as the success group. So just based on the value uh, that's uh, on your variable in your data set. So again, we have values of zero and one. So right now it's defaulting with a value of one um, for plan to attend college. But if we had selected zero, then we would be uh, indicating um, the success as plan not to attend college. So we're going to stick with this uh, selection right here. We'll click on confidence intervals. And by default, uh, the coverage level is 95%. So 95% uh, confidence interval around the sample proportion that we will uh, compute. 
there are a number of confidence intervals, uh, types of confidence inter intervals that are available. Um, we have uh, three that are selected by default. I'm also going to click on Clopper, Pearson, Exact, uh, and then also Wall down here. Uh, I will say that although we're going to generate that walled confidence interval, it's not one of the more preferable approaches. Um, these other ones are um, generally better uh, than the walled confidence interval. Uh, the Clapper Pearson has kind of historically been re regarded as you know the gold standard, if you will, for the confidence interval. But it is important to keep in mind that although the coverage rate doesn't drop below uh, like the 95%, if that's the confidence interval we have, uh, it is possible for the coverage to be greater than that. So that is a limitation of that particular approach. But uh, as we're talking through all this, uh, I'll probably be referencing the Clopper Pearson more than any of the other tests. So let's go ahead and click on continue. And then we'll click on, uh, on OK, and we'll generate our output. And so now you can see we have uh, right up here, it says successes. So um, like I said, each case represents a Bernoulli trial uh, with one of two outcomes. And so the outcome that is coded one, that is our success. And so we had 13 uh, successes uh, out of our 25 trials. And so the trials are just basically corresponding uh, in our data set to uh, the number of individuals. There were 25 individuals. We had 13 successes, so if we form a ratio of successes to observed trials, we get the proportion of, of, uh, of um, uh, students uh, in our sample that are indicating a plan to attend college. You'll notice, notice too that the 13s, the 25s right here, and the 0.52s, those are all the same uh, across the rows, so there's not going to be differences there. Uh, where you'll see differences in the output is with our 95% confidence interval right here. So you can see uh, the first confidence interval ranges from 0.335 to 0 0.70. The uh, Clapper Pearson ranges from 0.313 to 0.722. Uh, Jeffries uh, is ranging from 0.331 to 0.705. The Wald uh, confidence interval ranges from uh, 0.324 to 0.716. And then with this Wilson score confidence interval, 335 to 0.7. So uh, there are a number of different confidence intervals, obviously, that are possible. Um, my recommendation, again, is to stay away from the walled confidence interval. Uh, there are, um, you know, and the Clopper Pearson is the one that, um, that I tend to gravitate towards, but uh, some of those other ones are also reasonable. I'll also include a link under the, the video description for to a website that uh, kind of talks about some of these other confidence intervals as well. So at any rate, that's uh, that's our, um, our first uh, analysis. Let's say that we want to set our uh, success category as the uh, as um, the group that uh, has a value of zero uh, on the planned college variable. In other words, uh, those individuals who are planning not to attend college. So we can do that by going to analyze, compare means and proportions again, one sample proportions, and we'll change this to zero right here, and we'll leave everything else as is, and we'll click on OK. And so now you can see that we have 12 successes. So remember up above, we had 13 successes out of 25 trials. Down here, we have 12 successes out of 25 trials. Obviously, 25 minus 12 would get us the 13. Uh, and you can see that the proportion uh, of those students in our sample that are uh, that are uh, indicating that they plan not to attend college is 0.48. No big surprise. Uh, that's just basically the 1 minus the 0.52 that we have up here. Um, so as we look at the uh, Clapper Pearson confidence interval, you can see it ranges from 0.278 to 0.687 right there. So um, there you go. I mean, basically, um, all we did in this particular case was just change the, the group uh, that was going to uh, reflect uh, successes or the, the outcome that was uh, reflecting success. Okay, just to give you um, another example, let's say we had uh, three outcome possibilities. So in this case right here, we've got zero. We're going to use this plan two variable instead of uh, the first plan variable. 
and where zero indicates plan not to attend college, one indicates a plan to attend college, and two indicates uh, basically don't know. So um, we can uh, still use our um, the same approach that we used before. Let's say I want to uh, generate the um, proportion for, of, of students who indicated don't know. So we can go back to one sample of proportions here. I'll do a reset and move plan two over. And uh, where it says values, I'll type in a two since that's the, the uh, value that associated with don't know. Confidence intervals, we'll go back and we'll, I'll just kind of re-click those two, the Clapper, Pearson and Wald, click on continue and then on okay. And so now you can see that we have four successes that are represented right here. So successes uh, is four. So basically four students out of 25 uh, indicated that they don't know. So former ratio of successes to observe trials, that gets you the proportion that you see right there, which is 0.16. So 16% of our sample indicated uh, not um, uh, not knowing what they were going to do uh, with, re with regard to college. Uh, in terms of the Clapper Pearson confidence interval, uh, it ranges from 0 .05, uh, 0 0.045 to 0.361 right there. If, uh, if we wanted to, obviously we can change uh, things out and uh, generate additional proportions like for the don't um, plan to go to college group. Uh, we'll put a value of zero in there, click on OK. And uh, you'll see right here that it's basically the same as before. So you can see the successes was 12, I have 25, the proportion is 0.48. And then there's our uh, Clapper Pearson confidence interval right there. And so once again, I'll just do uh, those individuals who do plan to go to college. Uh, we'll just change that value to one right here, click on OK. And so in this case right here, you've got nine successes out of 25 trials. So nine successes out of 25 trials for a proportion of 0.36. And there's our Clapper Pearson interval right there. So that's uh, one approach uh, to generate some of these results. This is um, seems like a fairly recent addition with SPSS. Another possible approach, if you wanted to, you could go through analyze non-parametric tests and one sample right here. If you click on that, let me kind of reset this. Uh, if you click on that and click on um, customize analysis and click on fields, well, uh, our test fields, I'm going to move plan two out of here and just leave plan for college in the test fields right there. Click on settings and we'll click on customize tests. Uh, then if you click on compare observed binary probability to hypothesize, this is a binomial test, click on options right there. You'll see that you've got options for confidence intervals that, that include Clapper, Pearson, there's Jeffries, even a likelihood ratio right there. So in order to generate um, the, um, the, the confidence interval, you've got to basically decide on your success category. So if you click down here, um, I'm gonna click on specify success values. So success values, if I set it for one right there, and then uh, click on uh, okay, um, then remember that with our fields, we're going back to the uh, original plan college. That's, so that's, the, that's going to be the proportion of students indicating a plan to attend college. So going back to our settings right there, um, we've done that um, setting right there. And then for test options, you can uh, you have a confidence interval setting. So we can leave that set at 95% and we'll end up with a confidence interval that's go going to be generated. So um, there you go. So we'll go ahead and click on run right here. And so now you can see you've got uh, information about, uh, basically there's a binomial test in there, but we're more interested in the, the uh, confidence interval. So down here, looking at the confidence interval summary in this box right here, you can see for the, um, our, our um, success outcome is coded one right there. There's the estimate of 0.52, which we saw earlier. And then the confidence interval that ranges from 0.313 to 0.722. And just to show you, if we go all the way back up to where we uh, ran this originally through the other route, you can see up here, we have the 0.313 and 0.722 up there for that proportion of 0.5. Uh, 5-2.
if we want to generate uh, the confidence interval around the um, the uh, value of zero, basically the uh, plan not to attend college, if we go back to choose tests up here, go back under options, we can change the success value to zero instead, and then click on OK and run. And so now you can see that we have our uh, 0.48 that's given. So this is our Clapper Pearson again, just kind of highlighting this for you, Clapper Pearson right there. And then our uh, confidence interval ranges from 0.278 to 0.687. I'll mention too that if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that you get um, the uh, uh, frequency counts for each outcome associated with your data. So you can see on the left, that is for the not plan to, to attend or plan to go to college. Uh, that's coded zero. And then the plan to, to uh, go to college, that's the one which is on the right. So you just get a, a, a nice little bar graph there uh, for those counts. So anyway, those are a couple of ways that you can um, generate the uh, sample proportions and confidence intervals. Like I said, one option is to go through compare means and proportions, one sample proportions right there. This seems like this is a, a new um, addition uh, to SPSS, so that's a good addition. The other approach is to go through non-parametric tests and one sample and I'll be honest, it's a little bit more convoluted than uh, the approach I the, uh, going through this route up here. So, um, but if you wanted to go through this route, uh, you certainly could. So that's going to wrap up this video presentation. Thank you all for watching and you guys have a great day.